One taking control since the arrival of industrialization, the creation of the God science and the movement away from nature-based living, the process of healing yourself has focused on the quick fix of prescription medicine. Whenever anyone had an ache, a sting, or an insect bite, they turned to the medicine cabinet and its medicated prescription and over-the-counter drugs products for results. If an individual coughed, sneezed or suffered from allergies, he or she opened up the latest the pharmacy could offer. Whether the problem was constipation or a swelling, someone decided the doctor, the pharmacist and even the television ads were right. For the longest time, we have chosen our cures accordingly. This has not always been the case. In the past, people have looked towards nature for cures for simple problems. The whole of nature was a medicine chest with infinite possibilities to cure or kill. It depended upon the nature of the health problem and the skill of the wise woman or man. While a plant, mineral or natural substance may not be able to cure appendicitis, it can and does help you with everyday problems and many diverse illnesses of different intensity. It is not just an old wives' tale that eating certain foods will decrease the likelihood of you becoming constipated or relieve you of your gastrointestinal system blockages. There is more than a grain of truth in some of the old adages about certain fruits, vegetables and their derivatives. An apple a day keeps the doctor away is not simply a saying. It serves as a reminder of the beneficial powers of eating fruits and vegetables. The ingestion of roughage and vitamin C will help your body and its ability to function correctly in a number of ways. These range from helping ward off colds to abetting the healing of skin from burns to being beneficial in the fight against cancer-causing agents. In some instances, certain plants are capable of preventing or reducing the instances of many severe physical and mental diseases such as cancer and depression. Research indicates that St. John's wort is a viable option to heavier pharmaceuticals. Research is also making strides into the usage of other so-called home remedies. The findings of many experiments indicates you should not dismiss home remedies as simply the prehistoric ramblings of ignorant individuals. Today, doctors in many countries, including the United States and Canada, opt to practice what we now refer to as complementary and alternative medicine. Complementary medicine combines the best of the two current worlds of medicine as we know it. It takes into consideration the curative powers of plants and other herbs. It also does not neglect the strides scientists in the medical profession have made over the past centuries. A doctor who chooses to practice complementary medicine uses both for the benefit of the patient. In doing so, a physician realizes the roots of his or her craft. He or she acknowledges the reality modern medicine and its pharmacopoeia have its roots in home remedies. Without the discoveries of wise herb men and women, there would have been no medicine. In fact, most modern medicine was usually plant-based. Aspirin and opium are the two most obvious representatives of this earlier form of medicine making the transition into modern medical science. Researchers took the power of the original source, poppies and willow bark, and created a synthetic copy. The following chapters explore the various types of home remedies. They look at the most common remedies currently available and popular among practitioners. You might have some of them in your refrigerator or on your kitchen shelves already. Others, you can purchase at a grocery store, pharmacy or health food store. Most are inexpensive. They will not set you back a substantial amount of money. Some of the home remedies in this ebook, you can grow in your garden. They can be planted inside your apartment or outside in pots on your balcony or in an actual garden plot. There is a chapter explaining how to grow the top six home remedies, chapter five. There is also a chapter devoted to discussing the top 20 home remedies and their usage, chapter 20. This book, however, begins with the basics, an introduction to the pros and cons, benefits and side effects of using home remedies. It starts with a definition of the subject as well as a brief overview of its history. To the basics before we launch into a discussion of the specific usages of plants and other natural home remedies, it is a good idea to consider overall what exactly a home remedy is. We also need to look at the benefits and side effects, the pros and cons, of following this method of treatment. This section is directed towards providing you with the basic knowledge behind the use of home remedies. In this way, this chapter hopes to make available to you the information through which you can make a knowledgeable choice on when to use and when not to use a home remedy. 
Defining a home remedy There are several different definitions of the term home remedy. The common perception is of a type of treatment derived from the past and used by someone, generally female, specifically the mother or grandmother, to bring about a cure. The kitchen is the origin of most home remedies, according to this definition. This takes into consideration two aspects of the term, home and remedy. According to a formal legal definition, a remedy is a medicine or treatment that cures, heals or relieves. The word home indicates the origin of the treatment. As a result, home remedies refers to a practical cure or treatment that cures, heals or relieves using certain common substances such as spices, vegetables, fruit, herbs and modern materials, e.g. duct tape, petroleum jelly. All items used tend to have some other use within the household. Moreover, the practitioner of home remedies can easily locate the specific substance. Home remedy or folk remedy? Home remedies is often confused or made synonymous with another alternative form of medical treatment folk medicine. This is understandable since both types of medicine use herbs and other plants. Both rely on non-conventional medicine to bring about a cure or to treat the patient. Yet, whereas folk medicine tends to restrict itself to the use of herbal remedies, home remedies expands its field to utilize other natural and even human-made substances. For example, folk medicine may use the sap of the milkweed plant or a dandelion to remove a wart. Home remedies may use either plant's sap or cover the wart with duct tape. Folk remedies rely on tradition. The knowledge of herbs is passed on within the family. It has a history of provenance within a family, a group of families or a district. Originally, home remedies operated on a similar system. A mother passed the information on to her daughter. Her daughter then passed them on to her own child. This often involved writing the recipes for health and successful, or at least accepted, cures down in diaries, recipe books and similar tomes. In fact, cookbooks from before and after the Victorian era, as well as books on plants, describe the curative powers of certain plant substances. The Book of Household Management by Mrs.